Greetings, metalheads! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Now, as I've stated before, I love giant robots. Sadly, giant robot anime seems to be in somewhat of a decline at the moment. This makes me worry for future generations, because giant robot anime was what got me into anime in the first place. All of which brings us to today's topic, Mazinkaiser. Originally released between 2001 and 2002, and translated a year later by ADV, Mazinkaiser is a seven-part OVA that takes the saga of the Mazingas and strips it down to its component elements. The villainous Dr. Hell wants the world on a plate, but the Mazingas are standing in his way. So cry Mazingo and pile that on as we rocket punch into Mazinkaiser. We are immediately thrust into the middle of a seemingly hopeless battle as Baron Ashura, right hand of Dr. Hell, leads a parade of giant robots through Tokyo. But our heroes, Mazinga Z and Great Mazinga, are having none of it. Our heroes, ladies and gentlemen, cocky blokes in ridiculous helmets and lycra. We're also introduced to the B Squad, Boss Borot and Aphrodite A. And what function do these poor wretches serve? Why, to make the heroes look good, of course! But Dr. Hell's robot's surprise attack, and Koji Kabuto, Z's pilot, is forcibly separated from his Mazinga. And so Mazinga Z is captured. And worse, the Photon Power Lab is attacked by mechanical monsters. And the captured Mazinga. Great Mazinga puts up a spirited defence, but it's not enough. Just when the situation looks hopeless, a new Mazinga arrives. But is it hero or villain? Our next episode opens immediately where the last left off. Koji's alive, or is he? And the Mazinkaiser a new generation of Mazinga is on the rampage. And while Koji stirs from unconsciousness, we are treated to a flashback. In the flashback, we learn that Koji was taken by Z's hoverpilder to a secret storage facility where a shade of Dr. Juzo Kabuto, Koji's grandfather, and the original designer of the Mazingas has created his greatest Mazinga yet, Mazinkaiser. Back in the present, Koji awakes in an infirmary bed. But Dr. Hell is already plotting his next strike, and when the alarm is sounded, Koji is grounded. The greatest hope of defeating these giant goons and they go and bench him? Well, it's explained that if Koji's not careful, piloting Mazinkaiser could injure or even kill him. But the legions are too strong, and Mazinkaiser screams into action. But Aphrodite A doesn't fare so well. Now, we'll be skipping the gruesome torture and dismemberment of Aphrodite A. Those of you with weaker constitutions, you're welcome. Koji is forced to eject. And Mazinkaiser is captured. Luckily, the Great Booster severs the chains, and Mazinkaiser is back in action. But even as Mazinkaiser cleans house on the Mechanical Legions, Great Mazinga takes a pounding. And so our second episode ends with Tetsuya, Great's pilot, leaving to recuperate. And while episodes 3, 4 and 5 are mostly filler, there are still a few points worth mentioning. Let's dive in and take a look. In episode 3, Baron Ashura sends their daughters, the Gamiya Q, to end Koji Kabuto. They fail. On a lighter note, we meet the Venus Ace, Sayaka's new robot, along with Professor Yumi's new hires. Episode 4 is the obligatory beach episode, tiny swimsuits on the girls, fan service aplenty. That's all I'm going to say about it, you perverts. In episode 5, Baron Ashura runs Professor Yumi off the road and takes his place at the Photon Power Lab, which goes about as well as you'd expect, especially seeing as the party for the Professor's birthday features some rather telling gifts we also meet a new kind of mechanical monster. Well, that was fun. But 
But the real plot gets going again in episode 6. Dr. Hell finally moves against the Photon Team directly, unleashing a terrifying flying ghost monster. Mazin Kaiser fights valiantly, but the beast is unfazed. Venus Ace is having none of it. You go, girlfriend. <laughs> or maybe not. A good fire blast is all Koki needs to put down this malevolent mother crusher, but the damage has already been done. That night, the remains of the ghost monster infect Venus Ace, and she goes berserk. Oh, man, evil parasites. I'm telling you now, kid, that's a three-shot story. Koji heads for the Pilda, but oh dear. The situation looks hopeless, but then the team is saved by the unlikeliest of heroes. And there you have it. Conclusive proof, if proof were indeed needed, that a giant robot, however silly looking, can always beat 10,000 foot soldiers. Now let that be the end of it. And so, Koji gets to Kaiser and kicks Kan. But then, a horrific hybrid shows up. Kaiser gives it his all, but the hybrid grabs him and opens up Mount Fuji's caldera, preparing to make hot Kaiser soup! We open this episode by finding out what happened to Baron Ashura. Dr. Hell finally got tired of all those excuses and locked here up. Yeah, yeah. Gender-neutral pronouns, eh? Yeah. And here I thought that Owen Citizen would be the first to introduce you to him. Back at Mount Fuji, things look grim. Enter a new Great Mazinga, to even those odds. And while New Great battles the Mecha Monsters, Jun reveals the secret legacy of Dr. Kabuto. Dr. Kabuto's true legacy is the Mazinkaiser, the ultimate Mazinga, stronger than Z and great, and now with detachable wing craft, the Kaiser Scrander. And with new wings, Kaiser returns to the fray. And so the twin Mazingas make short work of the Mecha Monsters. Meanwhile, Ashura escapes confinement and convinces Dr. Hell to make a monster out of here. Koji heads for the Hell Castle, and so the stage is set for a climactic battle, as Baron Ashura has given up here body and become Hell King Gordon. <sighs> Gordon! Gordon! I, I shouldn't laugh. I mean, I know that uh, Japanese people find Western names exotic and cool, but Gordon, for Bree's sake! Hell King Gordon sounds like the kind of name that Gordon Ramsay would use if he went on Iron Chef. Rule of cool can only cover so much. But this abominable automaton is too strong. Koji is almost defeated when at the last second, the soul of Mazinkaiser intervenes. And from the heart of Mazinkaiser is released the Kaiser Blade. A blade that cuts this so-called Hell King down to size. With Gordon defeated, Koji faces down Dr. Hell man to man. But Dr. Hell has already decided to blow up his floating island. Because supervillain. What's to do, eh? And so our story ends with Koji rocketing from the ruins of the Hell Castle, ready for more. So that was Mazin Kaiser, the OVA. And I just have to put this one into the House of Love. This is the stuff that'll put hair on your chest. It's manly, hot-blooded, giant robot action on a grand scale. The heroes are heroic, the villains are suitably OTT, and the side characters all add their own flavour to this pot. And yet, you could argue that it feels empty, stretched perhaps. Episode 4 is entirely skippable, and episodes 3 and 5 could have easily been combined into one, upping the giant robot action quotient even further. This aside, Mazin Kaiser is a hot-blooded giant robot action OVA in the classic style. And hey, it may be crazy, but it's not Gurren Lagann crazy. 
So thanks for watching, and join me in two weeks for more fun and frolics. So long, folks.